are listening to, I say you are listening to, you are absolutely listening to the George Espinlob Show coming to you live from the funny farm. Now with no further ado, here comes Georgie! a rowdy bunch tonight and what what is today this is tuesday I, i'll tell you <clears throat> ladies and gentlemen boys and girls friends romans and countrymen i get my days mixed up i have uh times when i don't even know what date it is things are just moving so fast i can't keep up with it uh i need about three more people <clears throat> excuse me i need about three more people that can uh uh, answer some telephones and uh, 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 answer some questions and, and, and you know, do do all these things. Either that or I need uh, four more heads and eight more arms and hands, and, you know, with fingers, uh, preferably. But anyhow, things are just moving so fast. It is exciting around here, and I'm glad that you tuned in to the George Espinlob Show tonight, wherever you are at. Now, if you're down the street, if you're around the corner, if you're somewhere in this great nation or around the world, I want you to sit back and enjoy tonight's show. We have a young lady, a singer-songwriter, who is Swedish-born and is now living in Australia, down under. And she's coming on in just a minute, live from Australia. One of the one of the and I know this don't mean too much to other folks, but one of the things I'm curious about is exactly what time it is down under. I have about six thirty three up there on the big clock hanging on the wall right up right above the uh, Charlie's head there. Six thirty three p.m. Eastern time, six thirty four now. And I'm just curious what it's going to be before we bring her on. Email us, georgece at comcast.net, georgece at comcast.net. And if I haven't answered your email, please bear with me because I'm working on it. We are just being overrun with emails. Don't stop. Don't stop sending them. Please don't stop sending them. Uh, I'll, I'll get caught up. If not tonight, I'll get caught up first thing in the morning. But uh, just keep them coming, and I appreciate it so very, very much. We all do here on the George Espinlove Show. George CE at Comcast.net. So we'll be expecting to hear from you, and we will get back to you, I promise. With no further ado, as my sidekick and my co host always says, Mr. Charlie, we're going to bring, uh, uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Merva on live from down under. I'm going to get it right. Welcome to the George Espinlob Show. Thank you. <laughs> Are you in Australia? I sure am. Could you tell me what time it is? It's 8.35 a.m. 8.35 a.m. So that a.m. is Wednesday? Wednesday, yes. Isn't, we are ahead of you. I'm a bit older than you. <laughs> yeah, isn't, isn't that amazing? I'm talking today to you tomorrow. Yes. <laughs> and you're talking tomorrow to me today. That's right. <laughs> uh, you know, if, if you understand what I just said, that's quite scary. <laughs> it is. Like a time machine. Yeah, yeah. I think it, it's awesome. Thank you so much for taking time out of your busy schedule and coming to be with us tonight. 
Do oh, I, thanks for having me. Do I say your name? Uh, yeah, right. Uh, how do I say your first your name? Marva. Marva. Okay. Yeah. Marva. Marva. Yeah. All right. I. It is it spelled M A R. M I R V A. M I R. That's what threw me. Okay. So it's yeah. It's Marva. Okay. Marva. Yeah. I I but got. But where you. I come from originally from Sweden, we say Mirva. But I wouldn't ask you to say that. Well, <laughs> you, you know, I have I have a terrible time with with names, particularly last names. Uh, including my own, uh, and, and yeah, really, and sometimes, sometimes I can really tear up a name. That that's why I wanted. That's why I wanted to ask you. So it's Marva. I got you. All right. Marva. I'll I'll probably forget it and say it wrong. And if I do, please excuse me in advance. That's all right. <laughs> well, Marva, it's a delight to have you. Could you tell us a little bit about your background? Sure. Um, I'm a musician, I'm a singer and a songwriter, and my uh, I'm originally from, from Sweden, but I live um, down in Australia now. Um, it's a lot sunnier and, and a lot warmer down here, so I really enjoy enjoy living down here. And um, I've done music for, um, for many, many years and um, have had a had a little bit of a break in 2006 for a few years and now I've came back to it and we've just recorded some new material just recorded a new EP with a with a great producer uh, called Brad and Williams and we're just about to uh, we've just launched the first single of the EP called One and the whole um, EP will be um, having a, a big release shortly but you can still be downloaded um, online already as a pre-release have you always, uh, from the time you're small, been involved in music? Yeah, um, I've I've always been into music and performing and and all that sort of stuff. I remember being really young, making up songs and and wanting to perform in in front of whoever was interested in listening and hearing me. <laughs> So, yeah, it's always been part of my life. Ladies and gentlemen, if you want to ask Marva a question or make a comment, call us, 302-497-3414. That number again is 302-497-3414 or george.espenlaub, E-S-P-E-N-L-A-U-B. The phone lines are open, so take your liberty Call us, give us your comments, or ask Marva your questions, and I'm sure she'll be delighted to answer. Your website is marva.org, is that correct? Yes, marva.org, M-I-R-V-A dot org, yes. I got gotcha. you. So go to marva.org, M-I-R-V-A dot org, not dot com, dot org. Have you these songs that, that that you're producing now or have already produced? Did you write these songs? Yes, it's all um, it's all my own material, and um, and then um, I found an amazing producer called um, called Braden, like I said, and um, uh, we hit it off really really well. Works really well together. So so we've we've produced these songs together. You uh, you released your first album in what 2006 yes that's right and and what what did that consist of that was a that was a full-length album um and um i used to play um a lot more jazz influenced music which you can definitely tell from that album mm -hmm. um and it was a lot more stripped down um and a lot more raw than the music I'm I'm doing now. Um, the music now is, is a lot more produced and a lot more um, more mainstream um, in the sort of pop alternative pop uh, genre. But um, it was a great. It was. Uh, I'm I'm really happy that I've I, I come from a background of um, jazz and all that all that stuff because um, it teaches you it teaches you a lot. It's a, it's a really nice base to have within. Was was your folks 
musicians, singers, songwriters? My um, On my mom's side, everyone or a lot of them um, are into music, but not um, they didn't use this. No one really studied music. It was more a natural element. Uh, my grandpa plays the accordion, and he's done that since he was a kid. And my uncle plays the bass and guitar, and um, my other uncle also plays. And my mom used to be in a band, but it was more um, it was more natural. It wasn't it wasn't a profession. I think my grandpa would have loved to um, to be a musician, but at those times you um, you kind of had to get the money in, and uh, that's what he was told to do. So unfortunately, he never. Uh, he never got the chance, but um, yeah. So it's 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 very natural for me to to do music. Could we play one of your songs right about now? Of course. All right, ladies and gentlemen, and and Marva, I don't, I doubt if you'll be able to hear this, but ladies and gentlemen, Marva, I am the sun. Ladies and gentlemen, that was Marva. I am the sun. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Thank you. I was I was I was reading on your website and you said that you want to create feel good music. Yeah. I do. I um 
I've, as I've told you before, I, I um I used to I've done music my whole life, and when I came into coming into my twenties, I was sort of faced with depression. I just had a lot of questions about life, and I didn't know where I was supposed to fit in, and and I sort of started using music as my tool to to get things out and and get all my frustration out, which in turn ended up. You know, my music then ended up sounding, you know, negative, and 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 you could feel that, um, especially with the debut album. You can really, really feel that energy. And um, just just after the release of that album, I just realized that, you know, that wasn't the answer to 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 get better. I just felt like I was getting deeper and deeper into it. What by by sort of looking and, and, and getting into all this negativity so that's why I took a break from music because I, I just felt like it wasn't serving me in the way that I wanted it wanted to serve serve me and um and and I, I stayed away for a few years and and went for a for a trip within and um did a lot of reading and studying and meditation and 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 got into all that all that jazz and um actually came back to music because I realized that that is what I'm supposed to do and and um and um there's there's a way to use music to to transform people and and to 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 give something good to the world and that's what I'm supposed to do with my music and and that's that's my whole that's my whole goal and that's that's why I make music now is to to try and help transform from the world really just be one one small part of that transformation through music did i did i read and correct me if i'm wrong but did, did i read when, when you were first into the music it was a therapy for you and and i yeah. gu- i guess it was it was like w- when i write things it it's a therapy for me i can get things out of me that i probably couldn't talk yeah. out of me and yeah. then and then if if i hear you correctly it there came a point that it was no more therapy but that you was you was being uh what's the word i want to use overwhelmed by the negativity yeah that's right yeah that's how i felt and i didn't know what to do with all this and i thought well if if it's not working as as a as a tool or as a, as a form of therapy for me then why am I doing music at all what am I supposed to what, what's the point in me making music I, I, am I supposed to make music you know I didn't have the reason for it anymore because it didn't make me feel good because mm-hmm. I was writing about things that didn't that that didn't make me happy ladies and gentlemen we're talking to Marva from down under live from down under singer songwriter beautiful voice lovely music and i could go on and on and on if you have any comments or questions call us 302-497-3414 that number again is 302-497-3414 or george.espenlob you said something else that, that that struck me uh you said, as an artist, I want to practice awareness when it comes to the energies and feelings I spread. When people mm-hmm. say that, that uh, let's say, for instance, if, if I'm in a room where, where people are happy and joyous and uh, there's a lot of positive vibes floating through the air, that affects me and that affects everyone in the room at the same time if i'm hanging out with the folks that's negative down in the dumps woe is me and all those negative things that affects me too so yeah you you want your energies and your happiness or your fulfillment Mm -hmm. to flow out to people is that correct that's very true exactly you hit the nail on the head yeah exactly i feel it's so important that we that we know that as artists we have a big responsibility and it's up to everyone you know what we choose to spread through 
our, our art. But um, but I think it's important that we know that it, that it is a, a big it is a tool that that we're able to use to to do some some really good stuff in the world because well music is just an amazing way to to um, move people you know and I, and I think it's really important that we know that and that that we take responsibility for that. You know, I every time we have artist on the show I ask him this question Marva have you ever wondered or could you even begin to imagine what the world would be like if we had no music oh goodness it would be such a sad place wouldn't it yes yes uh I mean, we're the world is crazy enough as it is. Take away our music, and we we would really go over the edge, yeah. don't you think? Yeah. I mean, very often I believe music is 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 bigger than than words than what we can say. It just it moves you in places that words can't get to. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. I agree. I I agree. How many times? And I, and I'm speaking for myself right now. How many times I have felt down in the dumps, just not with it, uh, gloomy and all those other things, mm -hmm. and, and I hit the button and the music comes on, and wow, the music yeah. gets in me and I get in the music and all those things that I was feeling so bad about, gone. Yeah. And it is, it is so powerful. It's more powerful than, than any one of us. It's true. It's very true. I totally agree with you. I like what you just said about our responsibility. Because we are. We are responsible one to another, whether we want to admit it or whether we don't. Uh, I, I can have a bearing on one person or two people or three people or ten people during the course of a day. And it's just... It's just how I affect those people. I can either be gloomy, grumpy, down in the dumps, and when they walk away from me, they're probably feeling just as bad as I was. Or I can smile, mm -hmm. be happy, and it is our responsibility. I like that, what you said. It is. And I think that that's not it, exactly what you said. It's not just to do with people that are making music or or anything like that. It 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 goes to everyone. We all have that responsibility when we get up in the morning, and we all have a choice as of how we want to create our day and what we want to emphasize. You know, what we what we want to what what feelings that we want to have. You know, when you left music because you were somewhat confused. <clears throat> of course, I've, I've been confused the biggest part of my life. Somebody says, what state do you live in? And I tell them I live in the state of confusion. But that, <laughs> that, 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 that's just me. But when you, left, when you left music, how long did you stay gone? And I'm assuming that there was a vicious battle going on inside of you, right? Yeah. And that battle had been going on since I was a teenager, really. And I kept asking everyone, you know, why are we here? Like, what's the meaning of this? I asked all the big questions and people just looked at me and went, well, you're not supposed to think about this. You're too young or, you know, let's focus on something else. But I just couldn't let that go. And, and, and yeah, after my album, that was sort of the, the, the top of, top of that. And, um, and I just had to let it go. And, and, and I was fighting a lot of emotions and a lot of frustration during those few years. But um, it was an amazing journey because once you kind of um, open up to wanting to change, um, amazing things start to happen. And you start meeting people that can teach you things and that can help you open doors that you haven't been able to open before. So it was a really amazing journey for me, and it took me places that I never even knew existed within myself. And um, 
and, and yeah, the reason I'm here today is because of that, you know, so I'm so grateful. I, I sincerely never even thought I was going to ever come back to music again because I was so just tired and exhausted from 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 all these emotions. And I thought, you know what, I don't even know if I can ever do this again. And to come back to it and realize why you're doing it, and that that's my purpose and that's why I'm here, it's such a liberating um thing to experience and um and that's why i'm here today so that journey was tremendously important for the state i'm in right now you know with you saying that i said to my daughter yesterday afternoon i said you know you know I, I'm, I'm 64 years old so you know common sense tells me i'm not going to live forever mm. and i and i told my daughter i said you know i'm learning even at this age i'm learning so much about things people myself and i'm having so much fun that if i would die today it would really make me mad <laughs> But there, there, there's so many people out there that that don't know what I'm talking about when I when I say that because they're they're all bogged down and and they feel like you did and 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 like many of us felt we don't fit we don't belong uh, mm -hmm. I'm not good enough for this or that and, yeah. and all the other things especially young people what do you tell young people 12 13 14 15 years of age that's mm -hmm. feeling bad they don't fit you know the, the the other kids are are cruel and say mean things to them what do you tell kids well do you know what i think it's really interesting you say that because i strongly believe that you know the way that we think obviously affects our children and, and the way our society sort of what we emphasize in our society affects our children as well. And unfortunately, it's a lot to do with, you know, having a good job and having a good education and you are what you accumulate and, and you know, it's a, it's a lot to do with ego. And, and there's a, you know, unfortunately, when you focus too much on that part of your life, there's this other part that's very, very big that's not not getting recognized and not getting seen. So I think for children um, that are questioning, I think that they haven't been um, they haven't been told and they haven't had the chance to explore that part of them. There's so many kids out there that are so full of creativity and the world is changing tremendously right now. All our jobs, everything changes. There's, there's, it's just, it's not the way it used to be. So I think we need to tell them and let them know that it's okay to feel that things are wrong and they're the ones that are supposed to make the difference. They're the ones that should be encouraged to explore a different way of living. You know, they need to feel that freedom to be able to do that because they're, they're our future and, and they're the ones that can, that can make that change and that shift happen for everyone. That's very well put. You you said another word, creativity. Yeah. We have we have what I call a cookie cutter generation where it's almost as if uh you know when you roll the dough out on the table and then you take the little cookie cutters and you and all the cookies look the same. Mm. And that's what society is doing to young yeah. people. To, to old folk, to everybody, if they let them, mm. and and you're becoming uh, one and the same as everyone else. Yeah. And I ask kids all the time, do you have something that you really want to do that you're not doing? Mm. And it's sad, Marva, but I get answers like, oh, I don't know. That's, that's the biggest answer that I get. Oh, I don't know. Well, mm. have you ever thought about it? No, uh, you know, and, it's, and it goes with exactly what you were just saying. There's creativity down inside of each and every one of us. They have never been able to reach down inside and find out what can happen 
or turn that thing loose, what can develop. And it's so, so Mm -hmm. very sad. It's very sad. I I totally agree. And I don't know what it's like over in the States, but over here, they're even getting rid of um, that form of it, that part of the education system. Like there's a lot less of, you know, sports and drama and and arts and all that sort of stuff. And Mm -hmm. it's a lot more to do with sitting down and studying and reading and language and all these other um, um, other subjects. And, And that's such a shame because there are so many people that are not maybe good at that, but they're great at something else Mm -hmm. and they won't find out because they never get the chance to explore it. And that's really important. And I guess, you know, if it's not in the school system, then we as parents need to make sure that they get the chance to, to explore that part of themselves because that might be where they find themselves and that might be where they, where they get inspired and excited about life. Ladies and gentlemen, here is Marva. This is how we stand. That is Marva. This is how we stand. 302-497-3414. Call us. If you have a question for Marva, she'll be delighted to answer it or comments, whatever the case might be. 302-497-3414. Marva, where can people get your music at? Sorry? Where can people get your music uh, they can head to my website, uh, and they can um, all the links are on there. They can get it on iTunes and uh, CD Baby and and all that stuff. So if you head to my website marva dot org, all the links are on there. And that is M I R V A marva dot org. So yeah. get the music. You know, I I I showcased your music. I think it was Friday evening. Last evening, I think think we played one or, or two. 
and then I've I've listened to it while I've been working around here, and I love it. I abs- oh, thank you. And I'm not saying that out of flattery or or just because you're on the air with us. I mean that it is it it you have you have your own unique sound. I I like the way everything is put together. Thank you very much. I see here that on the 10th, is it the 10th of May? That Yes. The first single off the new EP is going to be released. Yes, that's the the launch of the first single called One. What's today? The 6th, 7th, 8th? Yeah, it's the 8th at in Australia. So, on Friday. On Friday. On Friday. On Friday it'll be mm. released. Good. Yeah. And you can get your or we can get your music at iTunes, go to marva.org and you can read all about it, right. listen to it, get it at the whole 9 yards. It is fan and this is my word. It is fantabulous. That that's exactly <laughs> what it is. It's fantabulous. <laughs> did, oh, thank did, you. Did you write all the songs? Yes. Yes, all of it. Yes, that's right. <laughs> that is is amazing. I've always wondered how people write songs. Uh, that's why I'm not a songwriter because I I just <laughs> I I don't I don't understand how it works or how it happens. But I'm sure glad that you folks <laughs> folks are around to keep making music for us. That's not songwriters. Do you have a band or? Uh, uh, somebody that, that, that plays with you all the time? Um, I use a lot of session musicians, but I do have, um, I do have um, certain people that I would use on a regular basis. Yeah, um, and we've also worked together in the studio uh, when we put the EP together. So we've gotten to know each other um, quite well. So, so they're the guys that I'll be taking with me when when we were performing down here. You said that your life is very different now from what it was a few years ago. Oh, yes. Night and day. Night and day. Um, I'm also a mother now, and I, I, you know, I wasn't even sure I was ever going to have children. You know, me and my husband sort of lived very free and traveled a lot and lived in all different countries and all that stuff and um and I I felt pregnant and um I was very shocked and and it was the best thing that ever happened to me I've got a beautiful daughter she just turned five and I've got a little boy he's one and a half he'll be two in August and they're just the light of my life I love I love being a mom and it just it really keeps you grounded as well and um they're just tremendous little teachers children I find I teach you so much about yourself and about the world and and about living in the now living in the moment you know you um, go ahead yeah no I just um, yeah it's, it's just I'm very I feel very blessed you know you're absolutely right when you said that you can learn from the little people yeah we raise four of our own we have 11 grandchildren and you know when you're when you're busy raising the kids, you are so caught up in, you know, this is happening and then that happens and then something else happens. But when you become a grandparent, you're not you're not doing those things anymore. You're just kind of like an observer. Yeah. And I just love it. My my oldest granddaughter is 23 years old. Our youngest grandson is about 18 months old. So we have them from 23 all the way down. Oh. But I just love to sit back and watch them because they're funny. They make me laugh, and they don't even know they're being watched a lot of times. I'll just, I'll just sit somewhere and watch them, but they make me yeah. laugh, and, and, and they, make me, they make me think because I'll sit there and I'll see something take place, and I'll think, I didn't know they could do that. 
and and it's a whole new learning experience for me as a grandparent and marva cling to them love them watch them enjoy them because before you know it they are grown up and they are gone i know it goes very fast so fast you've got to enjoy the moment i i tell all of our kids you kids are getting older now your mother and i aren't but you kids are getting <laughs> get, 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 getting That's older right. <laughs> hey can we play another song yes why uh, not all right ladies and gentlemen marva bring me closer closer by marva marva i see that that when one is released that that's the that's the single that's going to be released on friday correct that's right and and there's going to be a donation made the made the charity what is it the uh, mums helping mums yeah it's a it's save the children australia uh-huh. That are uh, they? They have a campaign called Mums Helping Mums. It's Mother's Day here on on Sunday, so it's really in conjunction with that. And um, and our our song One will be representing that campaign. So we've decided to um, to uh, donate part of the proceeds of all iTunes download of that song throughout May to help their cause. Ah, that's wonderful. That is wonderful. You can go to iTunes, ladies and gentlemen, and download that song and all of other Marva's songs. Uh, remember, it is Marva, M-I-R-V-A dot org, M-I-R-V-A dot org. And go to her website, and you can bounce all over the place. I see you've got videos up there and, and uh, all kind of goodies photos yeah yeah there's videos and photos there's 
articles and and all different stuff. Yeah, the That's... new um, the new single um, one the video for that one is up there, um, which is is it's quite a fun video. We um we did a release for peace event in in the city of Sydney. So there's some really beautiful sites of of Sydney. If you haven't been here, you'll be able to to have a look and see what it looks like down here. And um, yeah, we decided to um, to give up peace balloons one Friday, and um, with the attempt or the aim to release them all at the same time at noon. So this is the clip is is really about that experience and what happened on the day. So have a look at it. Do you uh, do you play any gigs out anywhere? Yes, um, we do play gigs. Um, we have uh, we got one booked for the twenty second of June, um, which is also in Sydney, to uh, together with a it's it's kind of like a conscious um, event as well. So there's there'll be inspirational speakers and things like that on the show as well. So they'll be in in Sydney, Australia. If anyone's interested interested in that, if anyone's listening from down there. Um, but all the information is is on my website about that as well. Yes, and we and we have listeners from down under, uh, and we have a lot of lot of listeners from the UK and the Philippines and uh, like Chicken Man everywhere and everywhere. And I know uh, that's the beauty of the internet, isn't it? Yes, it is. Yes, it is. This this high technology stuff just blows me away anymore. Yeah. Marva, I'm going to continue to play your other songs, but you've been so gracious, and, and I'm going to let you go. Listen, what I'm going to do, and, and I can't do a whole lot, but I'll do everything I can. I'm going to pass you or, or your name and your website on to some of my uh, brothers and sisters that's in the broadcasting industry. And would it be all right if they contact you? Would would you go on their shows if they invite you on? I would love to go go on go on their show. So please pass on my details. I would love that. Okay, I will pass it on. I will tell friends, Romans, countrymen, and anyone that listens to me. Would that be all right? Thank you. That would be <laughs> lovely. Thank you, Marva, for coming. And please. As as you keep on going in your in your music career, will you stay in touch with me? Because we'd sure like to have you back again. Thank you. I would love to come back. All Thanks right. very much. All righty. Listen, give your family my regards, and may God just bless you real good, Marva. Thank you. Bless you, too. Thank you. There we have it, ladies and gentlemen. This evening, it is now 7.19 p.m. Eastern Time. This evening, Tuesday evening, I was talking to Marva tomorrow, which is Wednesday. And she was in Wednesday talking back to Tuesday to me. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm just... <laughs> I'm just saying, oh, shut up, Espen Lob, and, and get it right. Here's another song by Marva, Parachute.
Marva Parachute. Go to Marva.org and you spell Marva, M I R V A dot org. Marva, M A R M I R, I'm sorry, M I R V A dot org. M I R V A dot org. And there you can get all of her songs. It is a very unique sound. It's a pleasant sound. It's a happy sound. And I'm so glad that she would take time out of her busy schedule. And remember, it is 7.23 p.m. here on Tuesday evening. And it is morning time tomorrow down under. So, uh, you know, it's, it's morning. She has things to do places to go she has her children to take care of and i thank her very very much for taking the time out of a busy schedule and spending it with us marva.org m-i-r-v-a get some of her sounds get all of her sounds and i know that you will be glad that you did 302-497-3414 or George Espenlaub, E S P E N L A U B. And uh, Mikey, if you're listening to me, I added you to the contacts, so uh, we're good. <laughs> we're good to go. I'm just saying. Now, 302 497 3414. You know, I have still, that's not good sentence structure. That's not good language, is it? I haven't found anyone yet that has had a visit from someone that was taking a survey for the Federal Reserve. This survey was supposed to be con- uh, that's being conducted by the Chicago-, Chicago University, and this particular individual that was here uh, two, two and a half weeks now I said, but they'll pay you fifty dollars if we just sit down and do this survey. And you, you can do, you can say anything you want to about Federal Reserve policies, and it will be read by someone in the Federal Reserve. And you don't even have to tell us your name. Well, duh. I mean, I was chosen out of however many that they said I was chosen from. So you already know my name. If you know my address, you already know my name. But has any one of you out there, anyone from anywhere, (laughs) been approached by someone that that wants to do a survey for the Federal Reserve, and you can can say anything you want to uh, pertaining to their policies? And this individual told me that they will read your suggestions or your contributions or whatever else you had to say, and they will take it into consideration. <laughs> right. Who is the Federal Reserve? Who are them people? Who's behind them? Who do they answer to? So on and so forth. I said no, and I was informed that they, they have to approach me three times. Uh I guess they think I'm going to change my mind, but but it, has anyone out there, that's what I'm saying, has anyone out there been approached by anyone to take a survey for the Federal Reserve and they're willing to pay you 50 bucks? Whoopie-doo, you know what I'm saying? Uh, they, they they can keep their 50 bucks. That, you know, it's not that I don't need 50 bucks, but they can keep their 50 bucks. I, I'm, I'm just saying, you know what I mean? Uh, so give me a call. Give me a call. And if you don't want to talk about that, call me, 302-497-3414, and tell me what you want to talk about. And we'll talk about it. What do you think of that? Let's play one more Marva. One more Marva sound. I'll get it right here. This is the one that is going to be released as a single on Friday. Marva. M I R V A dot org. And this is the title of the song. One. I smile, I smile because I know you now. Falling from time right where I belong. We are.
Marva, marva.org, M-I-R-V-A dot org. There you can get her music. Thank you, Marva, for being with us all the way from down under. I don't know about you, and I've said it a thousand times. I've written it in articles and in, uh, so on and so forth. But this modern technology just, just absolutely blows me away. And especially talking to Marva, this evening into tomorrow down under and she was talking from tomorrow back to tonight up here i'm i'm just saying you know what i mean hey i want to tell my good buddy harry over there in ireland i i don't think he's listening tonight he'll probably listen listen later he's nighty night time it's uh it's twelve thirty two in ireland but uh Harry, I I read your uh, I read your dooflicky on on Facebook thingamajig, and I think it's a great what you call it that uh, you know we we can get together your idea with with the uh, with the weather and the news and all that kind of good stuff. I think if you get a bunch of people from all over everywhere, that would really be uh, that would really be super fantastic. You know what I'm saying? So. Uh, I'll get back to you. I promise I'll get back and I'll, I'll I'll get involved with you. It sounds like a lot of fun, and uh, you know I just I just haven't had time to really sit down and communicate with people uh, the the way that I really want to or the way that I like to. It's it's just been uh, go 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 go. And if I'm not going going going, I'm doing doing doing. Uh, but it's fun. I, I'm telling you. It's fun. I'm not complaining. It's fun, and I'm so thankful that I can do it. Here is your homework assignment for tomorrow night. Let let me get my what you call here. Uh, homework assignment for tomorrow night class, which will be May the 8th. The only reason why I know that today is the 7th is because I'm looking at this this calendar do flicky. So tomorrow is the 8th. Here's your homework. Google Rich Levy, L-E-V-Y. That is your homework assignment class to find out who is Rich Levy and what does Rich Levy do and what has Rich Levy done and what is he doing right now. Rich Levy, Google it, homework assignment. And yes, we will have a short quiz tomorrow evening. 302-497-3414. Mark this down. May 20th, that is May 20th, that is a Monday evening at 6.30 p.m. Eastern Time. We will have as our guest, live from Chicago, Illinois, Mrs. Flossie McNeil. Now, for some of our listeners, you know who Miss Floss, Mrs. Flossie O'Ne- McNeil is. We have been airing the radio show entitled Unshackled, which is produced by Chicago, yeah, by Pacific Garden Mission out of Chicago, Illinois, for several months now. And we have had several people that had been featured on the program Unshackled. For you that have never heard it or never heard of it, Unshackled is the oldest, oldest 
Uh, uh, let, let me take this call here real quick. Uh, yeah, thanks for calling the George Espinlob Show. Hello? Hello. Hi. Hi. Who we have here? Delma Louise. Oh, oh, oh no. I mean, uh, that's good. That's good. That's good. Thelma Louise, what is it? Study Acre? Do the beggar. Study Acre. Do the beggar. Stu the beggar. Do the beggar. Stu the beggar. Stu the beggar. Stu the beggar. Yes. Thelma Louise Stu the beggar. Yes. Okay, now that I've got that. You caught me totally by surprise, Thelma. Well, I figured it's been a while, so I give you a call. Yeah, it it has been a while. Hey, let me let me ask you a question before before we say anything else. Uh, that 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 sister of yours, what's her name? Liza 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 May Swampbush. Yeah, Liza May Swampbush. Mm-hmm. Were Were you around? Uh, a couple of weeks ago, when 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 she called in from some whatever place it was, and she said she was coming back to the funny farm, was, was you around or did you hear that? I heard it. I wasn't around, but I heard it. Well, have you heard or seen her? I uh, know I haven't heard from her for a while. Like me, last I heard she was trying to get up in a basket of balloons or something. No. Mm-hmm. I'm thinking it didn't work out too well. She ain't back yet. No, she's not back here, and it's and it's been a couple of weeks. She said that she gave us the name of the town. Do Do you know Mr. Brian that drives the big yellow bus? Yes. Well, well, he was on that night when we was talking to Liza May, and she told him the, the name of the place that she was at, and he was going. He was. He said if she would stay there, he would go in the big yellow bus and pick her up, and then he would bring her to the border of the real world and our world, and we would meet her at the border with with the funny farm marching band and the funny farm drum corps and travis would have the funny farm bus and a bunch of us would meet her and welcome her back she never showed up and when mr brian went to where she said she was he he called me and and said she wasn't there and we haven't we haven't seen hiding her hair of her well, knowing Liza Bay like I do, she probably tried the basket with the balloons. And she's probably stuck somewhere in some tree or something. Oh, my. I, 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 I sure hope that she isn't, uh, I hope she's not, not hurt or, you know, worse. Well, I think she's all right, but. Who knows about Liza May? She'll be fine. <laughs> but but she might be out there in the wilderness somewhere, all cracked up or, or something. I'd say she didn't get too far. She probably wrapped around a light pole somewhere or in a tree right around wherever it was she was taking off at. Well, we'd, we'd sure like to find out what happened to her. But anyhow, that brings us back to you, Thelma. Uh, yeah. what, what's new with you? I'm getting ready to finish the third and ninth grade finally. You're getting ready I'm on to... the home stretch now. Of the what? The third grade or the ninth grade? Third and ninth grade. The third and the ninth grade. Yes. Well, I didn't remember. I told you I was doing both. Well, yeah, yeah, I I do now that you mentioned it. Yeah. I I think that's fantastic that that you do both grades. Hey, uh, speaking of doing them 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 uh, both grades, did you get a report card not too long ago or or? Uh, um, yeah, and I've been pretty busy. That's why I haven't been able to give you an update. 
third grade report card was off the hook. I made honor roll again. Really? And, yeah. And my ninth grade um, was okay. It wasn't too bad, but I still grade my Spanish. I miss. You're, you're breaking up a little bit. You you miss. I got to do some to make up work for my Spanish because I got an I on my report card. It means incomplete. I means incomplete. Yeah. Well, so I got to do some make up work apparently. Well, there's there's not many many weeks of school left, right? No, I wish she'd just let it go, but she's not going to. You. <laughs> You uh, you are quite an academia. You know that. Yes, I am. I told you it's all these smarticles. <laughs> what what kind of work do you do, Thelma? I don't think you ever told us that. I work at a grocery store with all these smarticles. Something wrong with that picture. <laughs> what what and what do you do there? You you uh, chief huckamucka or something? Oh, no, I don't want to be a Chief Hakamaka because them Chief Hakamaka are really nasty people. Are they? Yeah, and I don't want to be one of them. Well, do do you by any chance work with the public? Yes, I do. But like I told you before, I'm a different person when I'm out in the public. Oh, that's right. That's right. You did tell me that. Yeah. I I adjust. Okay, let's become one of them. Let 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 let's pretend you're out in public. Can you do that? Okay, what's that, mister? And and I'm a customer and I'm I'm coming to your grocery store and I say, Thelma, I'm looking for uh green beans and hot dogs. Could you tell me where they're at? Um, the green beans will be on aisle three on your left hand side about midway down, and the hot dogs would be back against the wall by the market. You <laughs> you are pretty talented. Yes. Uh, uh, how about Bubba? Did you ever get him straightened out, or is he still about the same, or what's the deal with oh, him? Oh, he's still about the same. I really think he's declining. <laughs> he's declining? <laughs> yeah. Well, he... he <laughs> He he wasn't too spiffy to start with, right? No, but it's not getting any better, and Lord knows it really can't. He can't afford to get any worse, but it's not looking too promising. So, for those people that 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 never heard you before, you have an associate's degree in criminal justice. Is that correct? Yes. And and then. You went back to school. You're in third grade and ninth grade together. Yeah, third and ninth together. Now, if if you get through this year, third grade, you're an honor student. So yes. will, will you go in sequence? Will you be in fourth grade next year? Yeah, I'm going to do fourth and then tenth. You're going <laughs> to... Uh, uh, which 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 is the hardest? Probably the ninth grade, right? No, I think third grade's the hardest. Third grade's the, it's the hardest, but that's the one you're an honor student in. Yes. Hmm. That's because I waste all my smarticles just trying to do one night of third grade homework. By the time I get to ninth grade homework, I ain't got <laughs> nothing left. How 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 do you work? <laughs> How do you work at a grocery store with the public, go to third grade and go to ninth grade all 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 together? How do you do that? Oh, it's not easy. It's I got a really hectic schedule. Mm. Plus I have uh my kids play baseball, I got games, my nephews play baseball. It's just I'm just never home. Hmm. And sometimes I get so confused where I'm at. I'm trying to be like the rest of them when I'm out in public, and I act like Thelma, <laughs> and then I have to catch myself and fix myself. Do <laughs> are are you are you the least bit concerned or worried about uh, Liza May? 
No, not really. Is, has she been noted to do this before? Yeah, she always comes up with these crazy ideas. I try to tell her stop, but she don't listen. So I just learned to let her do her thing, and whatever happens, happens. She'll she'll be all right. She'll come back around. <laughs> well, you know, there could be a chance that 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 she is really out there somewhere, broke up, tore up, messed up, and. She she might, she might really be in bad shape. Well, she is messed up already, but <laughs> I'm sure she's no more messed up than she has been. <laughs> okay, if you, you know her better than anyone, so I guess if if you if you think she's gonna be all right, you you do think that she will show up. Oh yeah, she'll show up when we least expect it. She likes to do this for attention too. She's well, one of them attention people. Ah, uh, anything to get attention, right? Yeah. Uh, you know, we got the phone lines open, ladies and gentlemen, 302-497-3414. That's 302-497-3414. Uh, maybe you'd want to ask uh, 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 Thelma here a, a question or, or something. So you better get her while she's here because, you know, she... She just blows in. We didn't know she was going to call. She just blows in. She'll, she'll leave just as quick as she come in. But if you got anything to say to her, just just give us a quick call, 302-497-3414, and, and uh, have at her. Uh, Oscar, get out of the tree. Get down from there, Oscar. Sorry. My <laughs> Oscar? Yeah, that's Oscar. He was in the tree. Dang youngin. He was in the tree? Yeah, he thinks he's Tarzan. Tarzan? <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. Does, does he play baseball or does he just climb trees? Well, he plays baseball, I, but he's a little crazy out there. He tries to just get a stick and go with it, but I try to tell him he's not that more civilized when we're out in public. <laughs> Hey, he when, beats on his chest when he's up there. When, when when you go to the ball field, uh, now that that that's regular people in the real world, right? Mm hmm. Do do you take Bubba there? Yeah, but I make him sit down and shut up. Do you? <laughs> yeah, but, I don't allow him to talk to other people. Does too much? Does he listen to you? Sometimes, sometimes he's just out of control. And I have to take him and sit him in the car. Oh, you make him sit in the car? Yeah, on bad days. Oh, I, I see. Mm. Well, Thelma, I, I, I sure am glad that you called in. You caught me totally by surprise, but I'm, I'm glad you called in. And uh, I, yeah, <laughs> I can't even talk right. I want you need you... me to send you some of my snorticles? No, no, that 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 that's all right. You uh, you seem to do well with with what you have. I don't want you to, you know, put yourself out or lose any smarticles. Uh, when when school is out, Oscar, quit chasing the mic too. The what? He's gonna bite you. <laughs> What's he chasing? Uh, What's he chasing? Oh, he Chasing the raccoon. The raccoon. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Thelma, uh, it must be exciting where you live, huh? It is. It's all kind of excitement where I am. Oh, I, I, I see. I see. It sounds sounds like it. So, you will uh, you'll continue to check in now and then, right? Yes, I have about another month of school left, and I'll be able to tell you whether I'm going on to 10th grade and 4th grade. Okay. Um, let you know if Bob is doing any better, Oscar got into a fight with a raccoon, what's going on? <laughs> okay. Hey, and if you see Liza May, uh, would you tell her to give us a call and let us know what happened? I sure will. I look Liza May up and find her somewhere. Get her out of the light pole, the tree, wherever she is, and I'll have her contact you. Yeah, cause, cause Mr. Bryan, he's still over there, wherever she said she was, riding around in that big yellow bus. 
when I don't know, well, she's still on the yellow box. The windows are really clean because she's done licked them shiny. <laughs> well, all right, Thelma. Hey, listen, thank, uh, thanks for calling. No problem, and I'll check in with you a little later. All right. Bye-bye. All right. Bye-bye. Oh, my goodness gracious. Caught me totally by surprise. And one more time, thanks to our guest tonight, Marva, M-I-R-V-A, Marva, from Australia. She was with us live tonight. So go to Marva, M-I-R-V-A, that's right, Marva, marva marva.org, and you can download her music, listen to her music, read all about it, and all those good things at Marva. Dot org. She has a very unique sound, and I think you'll enjoy her happy music. That's what it is. It's happy music. Before uh, Thelma Louise Studabegger called us and took us by surprise, took me by surprise, I was telling you that on May 20th, that's a Monday evening, 6.30 p.m., right here on Spreaker.com, 6.30 p.m. Eastern Time, Mrs. Flossie McNeil from Chicago, Illinois, will be our guest. She is. She is the director of Unshackled, the radio program that we play on Friday or Saturday evening and Sunday morning and sometimes in between. It is the oldest, it is the oldest, remember, it is the oldest dramatized radio program in history. It's been running since 1950, 
and Pacific Garden Mission has been around since 1877. So on May the 20th, that's on a Monday night at 6.30 p.m. Eastern Time, Mrs. Flossie McNeil, the director of Unshackled, will be with us, and she will be telling us all about it, and she'll be bringing some interesting facts and telling us uh, all about Pacific Garden Mission and Unshackled. It's produced live in front of a live audience every Saturday afternoon. And so if you're in the Chicago, Illinois area, go look up Pacific Garden Mission and particularly sit in on one of the live broadcasts where they do their show every Saturday afternoon. It's the story of a real life, a real live individual in real life that has went through some tremendous turmoil and they come out on the other side unshackled. So Mrs. Flossie McNeil will be with us May the 20th. That's on a Monday evening. So write it down, tell a friend, tell a family member. It's been a delight to be able to come to you again this Tuesday evening. Tuesday evening, and I was already <clears throat> I was already talking to someone that's in Wednesday. That, that's pretty cool. And that person in Wednesday was talking to me back here in Tuesday. Now, who said you can't do time travel? I, I'm, ju I'm just saying that that's pretty cool stuff. Your homework assignment one more time is Rich Levy, L-E-V-Y, Rich Levy. Google Rich Levy. Find out who he is, what he does, what he has done. And we will, yes, we will, we will most certainly have a quiz 3 p.m. Eastern Time right here on Spreaker.com. To all of my friends that are listening tonight and to all my friends that will be listening later, thank you for tuning in. Thank you for allowing us to come into your home, your automobile, wherever you might be, and thank you for coming here to the Funny Farm and spending this time with us. We have a lot of good things planned. If I could stop long enough, listen, there are a group of people that has some terrific plans. They are making plans. It's broadcaster working with broadcaster working with broadcaster working with broadcasters. You know, we, we, we live in a very competitive world. And it's good to be competitive. It really is. But it's always good when people lay their egos to the side and their ambitions or whatever it's called to the side and begin to put their heads together and come up with some really neat things. That's what's happening in our group. We have a group on Facebook, and some of these guys are coming up with some fantastic ideas. Harry, Mr. Harry B. is one of them. I think Graham Forster is another one, and I'm going to miss somebody, so I better shut up right now as far as mentioning names. But there are some real good things that's coming down the pike where people are going to be working with people and sharing our shows with each other and having other broadcasters and broadcasters on the show with us. It's just going to be a delightful time. Plus, plus we here on the George Espinlove show are endeavoring to set up a, uh, uh, a discussion a discussion in several different areas with several different experts. So we'll, we'll, there'll be times where we'll have more than one person on the show, and I, I think our discussions can become quite heated. They're, they're going to be refereed, if, that, if that's a word. They're going to be refereed, but I think you're going to find them very, very exciting. So I am done lip dripping for tonight tomorrow night is a different story i'll be back
But I want you to know, wherever you're at, if it's nighttime, you have a great night. If it's daytime, like down in Australia, you have a great day. But regardless of where you are and what it is, till tomorrow night, same time, same station, 6.30 p.m. Eastern Time, right here on Spreaker.com. Tune in for another George Espinlob show. And, and until then, this is George Espinlob. I'm challenging you, challenging you. Stay safe. Don't take no wooden nickels. God bless you real good. I'll see you tomorrow night. Good night, everybody.